Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And today I'm going to be launching my 2024 craft challenge. Yes, you heard that right. It's the 2024 craft challenge. So for anybody who's been following my channel before, you'll know that through 2023, I had a few months where I did a craft challenge. It could have been a card a day, um, a Christmas card a day. There was a couple of different ones and I really liked doing that. It's great to give myself a challenge, but on all of them, although I didn't know what the final card would actually look like, I did always have an idea based around the kit I'd picked or the paper pad I'd picked or um, maybe I decided I wanted to make a shaker card or something. So although it was a challenge, I didn't feel like it was the ultimate challenge. And I wanted to give myself the ultimate challenge in 2024. So it got me thinking through Christmas. For me, the ultimate challenge is to not even know what I'm going to be using when I first start. But I'm always going to know while I pick what I'm using. So I thought of a couple of different ways in which this could work. Maybe I did some sort of poll for you guys to... Um, like comment on or pick something but again I'd still be picking what was on that poll in the first place so I sat down with my partner and I said look I really want to do this craft challenge and I just don't know how to set it up so I have no idea what I'm doing and he just went I'll do it so <clears throat> in 2024 I'm going to be doing the Chris's craft challenge I'm going to post this every single Sunday because he's always at home on Sundays and so it's easier to do this. And essentially the rules are as follows. Every Sunday Chris is going to come into my craft room. Sacrilege I know. But he's going to come into my craft room. He has this empty box. It's an old um, gift box that I've had for a while that used to store some of my paper flowers in. And he's going to put some bits in here. He has no limit, so he can put one item in, he can put a hundred items in, he can put an entire paper kit in or just a page from a paper kit. He can even put in a card blank if he wants me to make a specific sized card. There are no rules for him at all. It can be themed, totally different in here. It's entirely up to him. The rules for myself... I have to use a minimum of one item out of here. The idea being that I use as many of these pieces as is possible. I haven't seen this, so on every single video, you're going to get my first reaction to opening this box. He literally fills it, puts it on my table. I come in here and start my video. So I have no idea what's in here today at all. If he gives me a card size, I must make that size of card. Even if I want to make something different, I must make that size. I can, to a certain extent, add extra things. So he said that I can do things like if I think that there is, say, a die cut that I want to use on the piece of paper that's in here, I can do that. Um, I can obviously cut it down, use my own adhesives and things. Um, if there's things in here that I think would work well to make a certain style of card, then I can grab things off that he's maybe missed. But the idea being is that the card is going to be based around whatever is in this box. If you want to join in too, feel free. If you've got somebody at home or a friend or family member who can come and have a look through your craft room or your craft set up wherever you are and get them to pick some things for you. Because I think this is going to be the ultimate challenge. Today is day one. We've had a really long intro. Let's get into it. This will be the only video where I say the exact rules on here. Um, future Chris's craft challenges will just be me opening the box and crafting away. I'm actually really nervous and excited because I genuinely have no idea what he's picked in this box. Shall we have a look? Let's go for it. Let's lift the box. I'm going to put that down the side. Okay. <coughs> Okay, right, let's have a look. So he's picked me 
two paper pads, two six by six paper pads. They're really pretty. I can probably get those to go together. And right, I think we're gonna go. It's gotta be a Valentine's Day card, surely. I can't see any card blanks in here, so I'm gonna be able to pick the card size, which is great. Um, this is a I think I want to say this is a new one. I certainly don't think I've used this yet. So we'll see what we make out of this. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we've got lots of different paper flowers. I know these weren't the ones that were originally stored in here, so he has picked these out. Mm, probably won't use all of those, but let's see how we go. Maybe there's some in here that will match those papers. What else have we got? There's some more there, look. We've got some half pearls, which is great. I've got some rhinestone mixes here. Uh, not rhinestone, some um, of my shaker mixes. What have we got? We've got two pots of hearts. And that one that's got all random shapes in. I've never made a shaker card out of this type of paper pad. So maybe we give that a go. There's some more sequins there as well. We've got some hearts and some butterflies. Some flowers. I mean, they definitely all go together, which is good. We've got some ribbon. I don't really use ribbon very much in my card. So that'll be a challenge. And then we've got some washi tape as well hmm i don't think that these necessarily go with that lot over there but we'll see we'll see this is part of the fun isn't it um <clears throat> i don't know what to make guys oh this is so exciting so this is the paper this is going to be like my topper pad and i do really like these we've got some ribbon strips They're pretty. I've got some more sentiment toppers. So at least I've got some sentiments to use. Oh, guys, I don't know what to do here. I really like this one. But my sequin mixes don't necessarily match it. This colourway would be better. I do you really like we've got a little caravan like that? Do you know what? Let's go for that, shall we? I think I might try and make it into a shaker card, you know. Let me see. Uh, what can I use? My scissors for later, but they're not gonna be much good for now, are they? <clears throat> Get out my scissors. Can I have a look? We have a little. I've got that, and I've also got this one. These are my little pen knives. So I could possibly. I have got a little metal ruler somewhere. I thought I popped it in this top. Let me just pause the video while I see if I can find this metal root. Right, I found it. So, let me move some of my stuff aside. I've got my um, cut, my little cutting mat as well, which I haven't used before. I've got my metal ruler. What I'm going to try and do is... <clears throat> trying to use one of my pen knives, and I don't know which one's going to be the better one. Try and cut this out here. And I'm going to try and make this into a shaker card. Now, I haven't done this before with any of these paper pads. So, this could be the tester on if this would work. If I can't do it with my knife, I may have to get my square die cuts out and use my Toddo machine. But I would prefer to be able to do it this way, if I'm honest. It's trying to be able to see where I need to come down to, I guess. So I'm going to be starting there. Let's see how we go. Mm. 
yeah it's cut or at least cutting off i think so let's go again here Let's have a look <coughs> what we've got. So that's all cut out. Let's see if I can just trim here. There we go. So that's going to be our little top that we're going to pop inside. I can always trim off some of this white and then I'm going to get my cutter and I'm just going to cut this frame off of here now. Get my Scotch ATG out. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that or not, so I'll pop out there. I'm going to cut this. <coughs> Apologies, I'm not feeling too good today, guys. Just need this frame piece. There we go. And now we have the frame. Oh, this is exciting. I've never used these for um, a shaker card because I've always used like the hunky dory sets. So let's pop that to one side. I may or may not use some of the sentiments I've not decided. That's going to work for that. Do you know what I might do? So I might just give this a little trim up just where it's a bit white. For a first attempt, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. There we go. Right, I've just neatened it up a little bit. I've not really taken much off, just where my cutting wasn't quite as nice as I'd have liked it. That is that. Um, oh, I like it. I'm going to actually keep this here because it does make it look a little bit easier than the white on the white, if I'm honest. Then we've got these paper pads. I don't know what will go with it, to be honest. Oh, that, that actually matches that colour quite nicely, doesn't it? I might take out a piece of this. It's actually a fairly good match to that um, sentiment. Mm, let's put that to one side. Uh, this is a new paper pack. This is a really old paper pack. Don't know if there's necessarily going to be anything to match.
No, I don't think I like that one. Maybe I don't use this paper pack. Let's pop that away. I don't think I like this one as much. I don't think it goes as well. I don't use it because I could put that on there I might go for like a six by six card that's what I'm thinking a little shaker with the shaker pieces I've got I might just add a little bit of glitter or something into it with that on there like that <clears throat> and then I'm trying to bring in all of these elements Maybe that bottom one. Or maybe the rose. That's a, quite a close match. I don't think there's anything on that one. One of those two. Maybe if I did that stripped round there with this on top of it, maybe. What do we think, guys? And then I'm just trying to incorporate as much of it as I can. Because you know what? I think he's done pretty good today. So, let me grab a 6x6 six six card blank to begin with. Where are you? Is that the one I want? Yeah, that's the one. So, I might actually cut this down slightly. So that I've got a little bit of a white border. So let me bring back my cutter. Oh, oh god, <clears throat> absolutely wrecking the place. And let me just measure what size these cards actually are. They're just under, they're just under, they always are just under. So if we cut that to that. Round and then cut that to that. That is then going to give me just a really nice white border. I like that. I like that. And then my only concern is if that ribbon is going to lift up too much and you're going to see it down the sides. But I was thinking that around about there somewhere. This washi tape will be fine to go around. Annoyingly, I've just ripped that, so I'm like coming over here a lot. Washi tape somewhere around there. So let's cut this off and get this stuck down first. Because I do really like that, I think that matches that colour way. Eh? 
So all I've done is just taken that round the edges. <clears throat> and then I do really like this one here. Yeah. You know, I think it'll be fine. I think I'm overthinking it now. So let's see how we want this to sit. Roughly around this, I'm going to trim this off like so. Um, how's this going to best stick? Possibly. Maybe with some wet glue, shall we do? See so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little strip of the self the um double sided tape and then some wet glue as well just to make sure it's stuck down. So we'll go up the centre with this. Like so. Trim that off. <clears throat> and then just to make sure it sticks, put some wet glue on as well. Blockage. Try the other one. Because it's blocked, it's better. And rub that one around. Don't want a really nasty blob of glue. So then I'm going to bring this back so I can see it. There we go. Curl that round. Uh, and do the same for that side as well. Hey, I like that. Give my um, board a bit of a white, get rid of this little bit of blue. I really like that. I think that's going really nicely. I don't really use a lot of ribbon to be fair in my projects, but maybe I should use it a lot more often. Right. <clears throat> so I do want to give that a bit of time to dry, but I also need to get this stuck down as well. So I think if we go for it roughly there, should be fine there. So I'm going to use my wet glue again. Not that one though. I 
and up over. That should be okay, it's only a thin frame, isn't it? Right, so I'm going to pop that to one side and let that dry a little bit before we attach it to the card. Pop that over there. Now, to make a shaker card, I'm going to have to bring some bits in. So I definitely need some of my clear acetate. I'm also going to need my anti-static bag, which is here. And I'm going to need tumble dry sheet. Tumble dry sheet. Use your preference. This happens to be the pack that I've picked up and it's doing a really good job, so I'm happy with it. So let's have a look. I can get on out of that end there. So let's give this a bit of a cut. There we go. Pop that out of the way over there let's see how this looks so I'm going to trim off a little bit off the end here I'm just neaten this up here I say neaten I just want to make it a bit smaller so it fits a bit nicer that's definitely fitting a lot better there, isn't it? So I'm going to go over this with my anti-static bag. And again this side. I can still hear the static, so I'm going to take a tumble dry sheet. This I found actually a lot better than the anti-static bag. I don't know why. But I can always still feel very staticky after using the bag, whereas after using one of these, it's like a dream. And they smell very nice too. Right, give that a good rub. Now there's like, I can't feel any static in it now, which is good. So I'm going to use that um, skinny double sided tape again. I can remember where I've put it. Did I put it back? Or am I just being blind? Nope, I didn't put it back. What if I don't that then? It's hiding under my card blank. So I'm going to use the skinny tape just to go around this frame. If this works, this is going to be so cool because I've never used these before for shaker cards. I've always used like my um, hunky dory kits that come with the frames already. One more piece. There we go. So that's all around there. Take this bits off. There we go. I'm going to attach my acetate piece on. Could have done with putting it up the top just a little bit more. It's absolutely fine. It won't um, fall to anything. But I've got a teeny tiny piece here that's just come a little bit larger than the frame. 
So just go in and trim that down. It's absolutely fine. There we go. That's better. So that is our frame all cut. I'm going to again go over it with this anti static bag. And we got this. And then I'm going to grab out my thin foam strips. I need to get some more of these actually. <clears throat> Pick these up from Craftalia. Absolutely love them. Didn't like the Craftalia website. Um, but I might try and put another order in with them in the next month or so. So if you've got any recommendations of anything that's really good on the Craftalia website, please let me know in the comments down below. I also need to put an order in with those because my little boy loved the lollipop they sent. Keeps telling me I need to buy stuff from the lollipop shop. Safe to say, Chris is not overly happy. As as he says, I already have too much stuff. <laughs> more new things means that there's more things he can pick out for his craft challenge. So I'm going all the way around with these crafting strips. I'm going to go around twice to give double the depth because it really does make a difference. And make sure that every piece that you put on, every corner that you have, you make sure that it is as tied up as possible because the last thing you want is to have any of this sort of falling out. And then, oh, might help if you took the strips off. Hey, guys. Take off the strips. And then what I like to do is when I then put in my second layer, is I like to try and make it so that I go over those joins. Just my own personal preference. It probably doesn't even make any difference. But I just like to know that they are joined together. Just put that teeny tiny piece on there. I'll use that for a um, what do you call it? A sentiment on another card later on. So go and make sure you put that right on up. I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna cut this slightly short because I want to go over that join in the corner. Like that, again coming across again. I'm going to come in a little bit short so that I can go over this join, and this piece is actually going to fit over that join too. And then I'm going to take this up. And I'm going to put that one right on up, come across, and just snip it. Now, I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to snip myself a small piece, stick that on there. And I'm going to slot that small piece straight in there. There we go. Now I shouldn't have any fallout from that. I'm going to move this out of the way. And the next job now is to attach this to our card base so that I know it is attached and secure. And I'm going to use my ATG for this. So move all my bits and pieces out of the way a minute. Go. 
because I know that with the shake piece there's going to be a bit of weight on this, I am going to come across at diagonals just to give it maximum support. And then I am going to stand my car blank up. This is how I find easiest to get this level. There we go. So that's how our card is looking so far. And I already think that's so beautiful. Right. Next job is to start putting some of our shake pieces on our topper ready for our top piece. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy little spoon. I'm just going to give it a wipe to make sure I've anti-static to this one up. So I'm going to go for... A little spoonful of this. Now I don't want too much in my shaker card today because I haven't got quite as much space as I would with a hunky dory one. Simply because when I normally make my hunky dory ones, there's usually the leeway of the extra frame, which this one doesn't have. So I'll put that in. I'm gonna pop some of this in. Be more than enough of that piece then we have this one i'm going to decide what i want to put in there because i don't want to put any bunnies in here i don't want to put any of those in because they look a little bit it's like snowflakes i am going to go for a teeny tiny pinch of these little butterflies i think they're quite pretty so just a few of those i'm going to go for again just few of the bigger butterflies tiny scoop of these hearts because you know valentine's day card so we need some hearts in here don't we guys and then a few flowers because why not Right, the only thing that I think this could do with now is some sort of glitter. I do like putting a bit of glitter in my shaker card, so. But that's okay, because at the minute the only thing I've added is the acetate and obviously my adhesives, which I need, so. I think I should be okay. I've got this really big tub of like lots of different glitters and things. I'm going to keep it over here so it doesn't cover it. Kind of looking for maybe a specific colour I guess I want something that's going to match that mm. oh this one would probably go this really nice pale pink actually just gonna have a look on my stand for a fine glitter oops I'm still here I'm just up here let's have a look what glitters we've got too bright too bright some of these are just too bright Maybe I could get away with that one. Or do I just go for like, do I just go for like maybe a white? I've got that one, but I think that might be too bright. Look, it's purple. Mm -mm. I have a couple of these white ones. I might just add a bit of white. I might go for the holographic one. I only want a little dusting. We've now got a really good mix there. 
I'm going to take my frame. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back over this with anti-static. I'm going to make sure I capture the insides of those. I'm going to bring back this because, as I say, I find that this helps with the static the most. Take off these pieces. So I think right now I need to make sure this goes on the right way, don't I? Shall we see? Yay! Look at that for a beautiful shaker card. There's enough in there to shake around without there being too much, that is just overloaded with shaker pieces i really like that i do feel like it needs a sentiment and i want to be able to use the sentiment to incorporate my flowers i think so i think that's the only real piece i've not used yet <coughs> so i've used that i've used that decided not to use that because i don't think it would match i've used some washi i've used the ribbon i've used the shaker pieces so yeah, it's literally just the flowers that I haven't used yet. So. What do I want? Might go for that someone special actually. Then it doesn't necessarily say that it has to be for Valentine's. It can just be for someone that's special in your life. So let me move that one out of the way a minute. Bring back my cutter. which I think I'm going to decoupage this up but oh, I think that needs to be smaller doesn't it guys so let's chop this down smaller special with love I'm going to decoupage this up so I'm going to bring back my foam tape strips Just going to decoupage this up once. Put that there, someone special with love. And then 
not sure which flowers are match actually. Maybe these like little peachy ones. Oh, all those ones. Might go for the pink ones actually. Um, just gonna cut two of these off. Um, either side just there so one two which I am going to attach with some wet glue and put quite a big amount on here because I really want to make sure that these stick and stay Like that one. I've never really used these flowers on my card making. This has been such a good challenge. Let me know what you think to this. The card especially. Would you like to see me use more of these like flowers and things? There's another little flower there. And then I've just realised I haven't put any of these on, have I? ones I think oops some of my glue so I like to make sure that these are stuck down There we go. <clears throat> what do you guys think to that? A beautiful shaker card. We've got the flowers, the ribbon. Uh, we've got a couple of the little gems up in the top, the little half pearls. Do you think I've passed? I honestly don't know. I don't know. But I really, really like that. I think that that is a beautiful card. I think that's a little bit different to what I kind of normally do. Like, I have done shaker cards. I definitely do these again. 100%. I think that those paper boutiques would work phenomenally as a shaker card. The frame is already there. So, um, yeah, if one of the reasons why you haven't done shaker cards in the past is because you don't have hunky-dory, maybe it's harder to get hold of them. I would say that pretty much anything um, that maybe already has some sort of frame around like this would be easily changed into a shaker card. I really hope that this passes the Chris's challenge. Um, let me know in the comments down below, would you have done anything different? Is there anything that you've seen that you would have done instead of? Do you like this style of card? Maybe I ought to do more of these with more embellishments in future. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I know it was a longer video, but it did also include the intro to the Chris's Chris, la, 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 to the Chris's craft challenge. Hopefully that the, you'll enjoy these. Um, please feel free in the comments down below to pop any suggestions in to pop into the box. Um, because I can pass all of those over to Chris for him to have a look at, see if there's anything in those comments he fancies for next time. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button. 
and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week. Bye for now.